really don't like doing this. That's okay. Be obedient. I know. I, know. I will be obedient. I, first, first of all, giving honor to God. You know, since we can't go to church and we don't have church announcements, but it really and truly is a honor that um, that I choose and desire and am determined to give to God. You know, for each day that He's given us. But I also want to thank you. LaShondra for this opportunity to come back on and uh, you know you have so many different destinies I call them all destiny's child or destiny's children but I really thoroughly enjoyed um, the conversation that we had the last time talking about the obligation of oil and you and I have both been talking about that every since ever um, since ever since we kind of launched that conversation publicly and um, hence is why we felt like it was time to circle back around and start having a, a, another conversation. Um, and just because of technology, like we have the privilege of you being in California and me right, being in Alabama. a nice topic, building capacity while build alone. On the, on, as I was pondering um, in the last couple of moments, getting prepared for the live, you all know I like to come from my dome. Like I don't like to be prescripted as the Lord and spirit moves that which I shall speak. Right. And so I really was thinking though, but sometimes I like to somehow have a framing around what it is, how I want to set up to night and as i was thinking i was like you know what this notion of capacity building and so i want us to be very intentional tonight again i said this last night and i want to say this again um as sophisticated and as intelligent as i know my audience is shout out to all of you i also know that god is also charging me in this next season of destiny downloads to speak practically right and to be very intentional around tapping into my teacher y'all know i'm an educator by trade um, and be intentional around uh, addressing multi-level learners, right? And making sure that as we're having these conversations, that both me and my guests, uh, we're intentional around making sure that the concepts that we speak of, uh, the things that we share are not high, they're, they're not so high level that they cannot be received by all, right? And so there's an intentionality around tonight and really around the flow that God has called me to in this next season of Destiny Downloads. And so if it seems a little slow or we're breaking things down or we're slow walking that thing or we're just kind of two-stepping our way through instead of twerking our way through, y'all just be with us, okay? Because that has been given, that has been instructions given to me from God to make sure that we're just not on here for entertainment. Well, in fact, we're not on here for entertainment at all because we could have had this conversation offline. Right. We really want the people of God to be blessed and for you all to get something from this. So if it seems a little slow or we're unpacking things and really like taking our time with it, um, again, there are some intentionality with a definition around capacity building. What does it mean when we say capacity building? Before we even touch on why build alone and that notion and that phenomenon, what does it mean to build you capacity? and our roots kind of got planted in community organizing and advocacy, right? And so um, when you start talking about, uh, or when we look back at the lens of our advocacy work, you know, one of the things that we were challenged to do in each of the states that we represented was to look at um, the capacity of the state, the capacity of, and, and meaning uh, literally like the state of Alabama, the state of Tennessee or New Jersey um, um, or the different states that we were in and then kind of look at it on a, a really microscope level. Like what what is it do we have in place? Um, what resources do we have around us? And resources could, could be individuals, it could be facilities, it could be finances, it could be you also looking at the lack thereof. I remember in my professional setting, um, and if you if you've had you know some some level of, of training and development, one of the things that a real good planner is going to do with you is start out with helping you identify um, this acronym called SMART, <laughs> like your SMART goals, right? And so what you're looking at is you know what do you have in place. Uh, available to you to assist you in this end goal of what you're talking about uh, capacity building you know one of the worst things that that we can want we can do and I think this is this is where we make a mistake like we have this goal of something here right but we haven't really looked at do I possess the knowledge the abilities the skill set the um and the like human capital, the resources. Uh -huh. right. Do I have those things in place? Am I in a position um, 
for this capacity that I desire to be? Am I, am I in a position to do that? I can even talk about when I when I first started, uh, when I first looked at um, uh, Black Alabamians and wanting to birth the organization. I knew I had a I had a, a dream and I knew it was something. It was a vision that God had given to me. But I also had to build capacity to be able to accomplish that. And so it took steps. It takes a process. So when we kind of look at, you know, when you're talking about building and I don't want to get in front of our conversation. But when you talk about building, when you look at this capacity, it's like, how much can it hold? You know, we have phones. I, I have an iPhone. And, um, you know, when you purchase phones, some phones come with, you know, 12 gigabytes. Some come with 64. Some come with 200 and I think 64 or 65. And it's like once it's at that capacity, you know, it's no longer, it's, in, it's unable to do what you may be desiring for it to do. So when we start talking about capacity building, like I may desire to do this, but am I in a position? Do I have what I need to be able he to build that? Use several examples. Uh, one, one being with the phone. When you purchase a phone, it comes with various plans, right? And really depending upon the features of the phone and how much the phone can hold and for space and storage, right. it really depends on your price, right? So we know any, everyone has a cell phone, right? We know that based on how much storage a phone right. has, based on how many gigabytes that come with that phone um, determines your plan and also determines right, what right, we will right. notice is, I feel God, what we will notice is that a phone that has greater capacity or a phone that has more storage or a phone that has more space costs more. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so, you know, you, any, any one of us can 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 mm. testify to being a, a, a client or a customer, rather, of Sprint or T-Mobile or Verizon and, and shopping through plans. And so, you know, when you're looking at capacity, when you're trying to shop for cell phones, right, for those of us who do a lot on our cell phones, we need more space. We need more storage because we realize we're going to use this device for multiple things. Yeah. So those of us who may or may not need as much space or need as much storage yeah, or really space and the vision for their life, they may not need the phone but to call it to text. But if you're using this for business, for social media, for engagement, you realize you're going to have to make a deeper investment in your device because of the vision that you know you have so for how you're going to get capacity right? building and or building capacity. It's not just building something, but you also have to have a build vision for its use mm -hmm. right Amen. that vision for its use is going to help you determine yeah. how much capacity you need to indeed build what yeah. it is you have a vision okay. to be okay Come yeah on. yeah y'all let us know if this is making sense right um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's gotta be it's gotta be if it's not making sense y'all gotta rewind and pick it up again so, this so, is so even on. with that we almost could have named tonight data plan Ooh. what's your data plan let me tell you because i remember i remember oh yeah. my god I remember, and thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for even just giving me the, the you know, the wherewithal to even, you know, parallel this to a cell phone because mm -hmm. I remember when I was going from, um, like, you know, you know, you and I, we have history. And so when it comes to technology and even, you know, we talked about this earlier tonight, so getting on social media, I used to press push back, like, no, 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 I don't want to. But I remember having, I, I always love taking pictures on my cell phone. And before I came to the iPhone world, like I had an Android, I had a Blackberry. Uh, we all once had the flip phone. And I used to wonder why there were some things, I, even when I got to the iPhone, um, I think I must have had the lowest gigs and I didn't understand how the gigs work. And it was like, why can I not do certain things? Mm. And at the time I was thinking, oh, that doesn't make any sense. But then mm. I realized I had to pay more to get um a better plan mm -hmm. like you talked about i had to pay more to get a better plan because of what i was trying to do i had to increase my capacity mm -hmm. and it costs more mm -hmm. but my god was it worth it because now i have way more yeah i have way more space my ability my capabilities my capability absolutely has capability. To match is, yeah. a, is the outcome of my capacity yeah. what i'm yeah. able to do Dedicated on how much capacity I yes. have. So important right. because we talk dreams, goals, and ideas, and we talk destiny, right? Um, and we see people that some people can just create, produce, and do so many different things. We're like, dang, we still on 
project number one or goal number one, there's something that's happening behind all of that, right? You really have to sit with yourself and we haven't even got to the part of building with yet. Right now, we're just looking at an internal, an in introspection, right? Looking at, you know, how much can I as an individual hold, right? Mm -hmm. How much space do I have, we right? We look at different individuals and we're looking at, wow, how are they able to do and expand? And the reality of it is you can have all the dreams, the goals, ideas, but do you have the capacity to encompass all that you're thinking about, right? All that it is you're wanting to do. And as Neon said with the example of the cell phone and the, and the different features, and she wanted to do more. And it started with, again, that desire to do more. Yeah. And yeah. so she didn't just sit and be frustrated with her phone, right? She realized I don't have the device to do more with. Mm -hmm. So what I need to do is to make an intentional decision to upgrade my device so yeah. that I can do more, right? Capacity building. Capacity. Capacity building. Capacity building. And building, right? You have to really be honest. Do I have the tools that I need? Do I have the resources? Do I, do I have the plan? Right? Do I even yeah. have the vision yeah. that matches what it is I'm talking about? Right? Have I yeah. mapped and carved this thing out? Yeah. And if I don't have the devices and the tools and the resources and the human capital, what am I doing to intentionally yeah. get and there. retrieve those things, i.e., build capacity? God is God. Is, every now and again, God will give me um, a sports analogy. And here's what God gave me to help me with this notion of how we're about to segue with capacity building. Like, uh, we, if, if you follow the game of basketball, specifically college basketball, we have one of the greatest uh, coaches right in the city of Memphis, right? Shout out to the home team um, in Anthony Penny Hardaway, right? And so and when he came in, like any coach, any one of you all that's a sports lover, you, you'll understand this. When he came in, he had to do a survey, right, of the landscape, right, of the athletic program, of the team, right? And we kept, there were so many news articles and videos showing him traveling during off season. During off season, he would go out and God said, what does a coach do during off season? Mm -hmm. A coach goes out, recruits, scout, survey talent, right? And so here's the thing. You all, if anybody grew up in the hood, you know it's hoop was everywhere. Get in and out of the schools, in and out of the hoods, at every park, there's a hoop. There's, that, there's those kids that like, you know what? They could make it, right? And so it's not that there's ever a deficit in talent, but here's the thing. I believe that as Penny was going on his recruiting and his scouting trips, not not he was just not looking for talent but he was also looking for a certain caliber of talent that matched the vision that he had. Mm -hmm. So what am I really saying? As a coach, when you're playing on a, if you're the coach of a team, if you're the leader, if you're the head of something, well, God has been giving you a vision. With that vision, you then have a responsibility because only you know, right? That what you need that's going to align with that vision that you've been given, capacity building, right? Mm -hmm. And so I want to segue and talk about for a little bit, this notion of the significance of having this vision, right? Because it's not that you're just looking, you're, you're looking at a blank canvas, you're intentionally scouting, you're intentionally looking for, you knew what type of phone you needed, you knew the type of storage you needed based on what the vision of what you wanted to do with this phone, right? So talk, talk a little bit, friend, being an ED, being a founder, shout out to my girl, she's a founder, of an organization. I ain't just give her this job. She started this thing from the bottom up. Now she her shout out. Like, talk to us a little bit about the significance before we get to you on my team, you on my team, you on my team, the significance of having this vision. Wow. It's a weight. It's a weight of having a vision. But, but again, as I said earlier, that it, it is something that I know it was God given. And so I think one of the nuggets that if anybody's taking notes, um, whether that's physical or just mental notes, one of the first things we have to know when we start talking about building something is that, is it from God? Did mm -hmm. Lord, did it come from have you? you yeah. assign, are you assigning me to do what I feel like you're telling me? And so when, when you talk about building, what I know for sure is that when I was in, when I was thinking about starting Black Alabamians, and then it's not just this nonprofit, but anything that I've really desired to do I couldn't, I couldn't rest, wasn't able to mm -hmm. sleep. I knew it was from God because what it cost financially, right. I didn't have all it. of the knowledge, skills, and ability. I don't So it it's already telling me I've got to increase my capacity and knowing that if I'm not able to do it as an individual, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to get ready to build. But 
And shout out to my brother Cedric. He came on here. We uh we uh he he looks at me crazy when i tell this story and now i get to share it on the world wide web about why i'm debt free at least from education is because my brother this is good my brother at a very young age invested in me and it wasn't so much a financial investment but it was investment in teaching me how to properly teaching me how to dribble teaching me um you know how to build confidence by taking me into our local gyms taking me to black tops and taking me to thompson rick and taking me to uh to uh the Martin and that was King. back in the days when you had to sign with so many people that wanted to play in the game and this is good oh thank you lord so many people want to play in the game but like, are you ready? Are you willing to wait your turn? But are you also willing to build Penny off season, preparing, developing himself and looking at what kind of team he needs? So are I you willing out to do My that. brother Cedric, shout out to him. He took the time to do that. We would go into GMs and you know, I was a skinny little left-handed girl, very unassuming. Didn't look like I knew what I was doing. My brother would always be the one to go in and sign up. And uh, he would put, he would write his name down. And you know, the person that write their name down, they get to pick their team. And he always chose me. And he would always pass me the rock and tell me to shoot it, shoot it. So I'm saying that as a parallel in, and I know we're not quite into like who I'm building my team with, but you got to have someone on your team that's going to encourage you in what you're good in. But then you also have to be an encourager if you're going to be a leader in this. When you're talking about building a team, having having that early on uh, individual, that being your brother, that was taking you to the gym and investing in you. So yeah. a key word that I heard, yes. I heard investment, right? When you're talking about building capacity, right? As a coach, as a leader, as a visionary, at some point it's going to cost something right? yes. of nice yes. money, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Could very well be time, energy, and effort. You're going to have mm -hmm. to literally sew back into the vision that God has given you. Even as a yeah. coach, you have to sew time. My brother, oh my Lord, listen, I listen. I really think he could just do this thing full time. You know, like this is his thing, but I have watched him over the years invest on top of everything else, time yes. into these young men. And not just right? on the court, again, yes. off the court. There's a lot yes. of behind the scenes things that take place right oh, that people yeah. don't get to see right the practice yeah. and, and the motivational talks and the so many things we're talking about building capacity right you're talking about nuggets in place and because of the vision that a coach has or because of the vision that my brother has for his team or that the vision that even your brother saw in you he was like you know what let me make this initial investment let me yeah. soak these seeds let me build up and yeah. i'm sure like any of us we never know what god is doing right we just we're, we know to be obedient right yeah. and so your brother did not know this girl gonna go i don't know what this tree gonna spring up to be but i'm gonna so no say in ministry and in the church we have to be intentional around not just building ministry but building people people yes they come yes. out that way building people which requires an investment it is yes. so dangerous to be in leadership if you're not willing if to you're invent. not willing to build it is dangerous for you to be seated in the seat and calling yourself a leader a teacher a coach or whatever if you are not willing to invest into the people if you're not willing to invest back into that same thing because here's also what i heard you say in this notion of building capacity capacity building and investing based on how it is you go about this building that's in alignment to that vision right yeah. you you've been giving something so you know what it is you're looking for so i need and you have to see the potential in a person you have to see the greatness in a person before it even come come before it even manifest right as the coach as the leader as the pastor right or whatever it is as, as the ed right as the school leader right you have to literally take be able to take something in c form and invest and cultivate and nurture that thing but here's the you have to be have a willingness the, the, to the, the significance of building this foundation yeah. and you yeah. that have been given yeah. the vision you have to know what it is you're looking for and yeah. what you're looking for is predicated upon this vision what yeah. it is i'm trying to write yeah listen. let me i, I want to look okay, I, wanna ahead, in, I just want to jump in real quick because you know in preparation i was looking at some scriptures and i was like oh Ooh, ooh, ooh. And Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18 says, because of laziness, yeah. the building decays. Mm. Through idleness of hands, the house 
leaks. So when you start, when we've been talking about investing, we've been talking yeah. about capacity, we've been talking about, you know, the, the really the weight and what it requires yeah. um, in building something. Yeah. You can't just build it. Yeah. And let it and just and just say it's there. Like the, the Bible, like you like we like to say the Bible says right. the laziness of hands, the house leaks. Yeah. So for those that know, like I know you was getting ready to, to go down. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Relative, because I'm not saying nobody in my family is lazy or nothing like that. So any, all my folks on here, nobody take that that at all. But um, my my grandparents um, were so blessed that uh, you know they were homeowners and they were able to uh, uh, leave. Proverbs uh, thirteen twenty two says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and so right now my my generation of family members we're a part of that children's children, and so our grandparents left the house, and um, you know we're in the process of trying to you know do some repairs on that house, and it's so evident that if you don't do what you need to do. If you don't work, if you don't continue to invest, if you don't continue to build, that the house will leak. And so, you know, we we can all yes, we, yes, we good. Can all and so and, 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 and we can all see situations and we all know of situations right. where houses and homes have leaked. But I wanna speak, you know, to houses, homes, relationships, relationships. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, come on, friend. I just, you let me, I just want to say, I just want to say that, you know, Amer the world right now is, we're at, we're in a standstill. You know, we're, we're at home if we are being obedient to what we've been instructed to do. We are at home or we are in our safe places and many people are fearful. And then a lot of people are excited and have all these dreams and goals and desires about things that they want to do and don't really know where to start. And so whenever this thing is over, there are a lot of things that are about to be birthed. And so for anybody of the folks that are listening in that may be coming back and watching this later, I, I, I need you to hear as we share what it really looks like and what it really means to build capacity. I mean, you really have to, you got to know that this is what I this is what I've been assigned to do, and it kind of goes back to even our first live that you and I did together, just talking about the obligation of oil. But it led us to dealing with identity. Yeah. If you don't really know who you are, yeah. and if you don't really know what God has placed on your life, then you might find yourself investing in some of the wrong places. Mm -hmm. You may find yourself spending time. It's just, it goes back to even my cell phone parallel. I had the wrong phone for what I wanted to do. I didn't have enough. Ooh. I mean, I was playing and I was doing everything I needed to do, but I just didn't have, I didn't have enough capacity with that particular phone to do and what so, I needed. You know, as we look at this and as we, you know, we just kind of digging around this conversation about capacity building. And the question that we posed on these flyers, I mean, on this announcement is why build alone? And um, I don't want you to go too fast. Well, okay, you can go not, fast, but I want to pull out what you just said around because you went there. You can't you can't go there, friend. And then, and then we gotta right? Okay. So this notion okay. of building, right? You said you said something around like based again, based on identity, based on this vision you've been given, which is identity all in itself, right? Because I believe God gives us vision based on who we are, which is identity, who we are in God. Because he He knows what it is we can indeed encompass, right? If we mm -hmm. seek him all of our heart and being, right? So what he gives us, God is, I believe, confident you do have, because I would have given it to you if right. I didn't think you could fulfill it, right? right. You, so really, even before you get the vision or even before you start to build, you really have to be so in tune with God and know who you are and trust the fact that, guess what? If God has given me something, he's already equipped me with what I need to mm -hmm. bring that thing to pass, right? Mm -hmm. That's A. Part B is because okay. God has given you this vision, right? He also knows what and who you'll need mm -hmm. to bring that oh, yeah. thing to pass. Right, and so it's also dangerous to waste time with yeah. people, spaces, and places. Right, if if it doesn't align with what you know it is you're trying to accomplish, or That's what right. it is you know you're trying so to. So as we move into why build alone, before we even talk about the benefits of building with, 
we also have to touch on it you touched on it friend the significance of knowing what not to be with right and and, and and all of us are guilty of wasting time with negroes ninjas and naysayers yeah. who were contrary to the call yeah. of our life that was yeah. contrary to the vi- and there's no indictment on yeah. them it's just that again based on this well, vision, right. they they the based on the vision god has given me you don't fit the team that i'm trying to build don't That's mean right. you don't have talent don't mean you don't have skill set. Don't right. mean you're not dope. You just not dope for this. Right. I That's have right. to be so married and dedicated yeah. and committed to what I know God has given me mm-hmm. that I operate in the spirit fully, realizing as this coach, I am trying to build a team based yeah. on what God has given me. I, I God has given me the caliber. God has given me who the what. And those that don't make it don't necessarily mean you disqualified. Right. You're just not needed or you you just don't have what I need for this right here. Right now, right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Yeah. That's a change, right? That's right. That's so, right. In preparation for this and even over our conversations over a period of time, you know, one of the things, one of the books that I read some time ago is um a bishop up in Nashville, Bishop Walker. Joseph Walker, one time plus for him and Dr. Steph doing great work at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. And he is the presiding bishop of the full gospel Baptist. Um, Amen. Saints. Thank you. Amen. Saints. But he wrote a book that's entitled uh, Now, No Opportunity Wasted. And one of his chapters, he talked about building a now team, a no opportunity wasted team. Mm. And he, four things, four qualities, four sort of um, uh uh-huh like absolutes that you have to have Mm -hmm. when you start looking at you know I'm building a team Mm -hmm. I'm moving forward so one of the things that he talked about was you got to have your your team members got to have character Mm -hmm. the second thing he talked about is your team members have to be competent Mm -hmm. the third Mm -hmm. thing was your team members have to um, have to have to have this certain cadence Mm -hmm. and then the other thing he talked about was capacity and, and um, you know, when you when you were mentioning earlier, just about like what not so much what you don't possess, but what they absolutely have to possess. One of the things that stuck out to me in all four of those things he talked about was cadence. Uh-huh. And I was like, Bishop, I'm gonna need you to dig around that a little bit more. And so, if you have heard another thing about Bishop, he was he is from Louisiana, um, from a, uh, I keep wanting to say Baton Rouge, but he's not from Baton Rouge. He's from. Uh, Thank you, Shreveport, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Uh, went to Southern University uh, in undergrad, and he was a drum major there. And so he he knows music. But one of the things he talked about when he started talking about uh, uh, cadence is that when a drum major blows his or her whistle, they set the cadence, and they don't look back to mm. see if the band is doing you know, in step marching like they're supposed to, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing because the cadence has already been set. In our lives, you know, you you talked about when we opened up, you said we're gonna slow walk and we're not gonna twerk it. Sometimes as a leader, you may be ready to twerk and your members are slow walking and that cadence is not working for where you're trying to go. And so what that means is that that member Friend, come back. <laughs> Listen. What that means is that that particular, those particular or that particular member is not, they're not ready. They can't be a part of the now team. It doesn't mean they don't possess a skill, a talent, or an ability, but it just means in the application of now, this no opportunity wasted now, what, you know, I, I'm sorry, but it don't work. It's not you look work. for the whole beat yep. of the band off, right? Because we try to get there on the field. But we right. want to get through this halftime field show, right? Right. But I love that. What he, but he say? We we not when the drum major blow that whistle, friend. I ain't looking back. You need to be me. back. And, and and but 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 ooh, the 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 security, right? Yes. Or that the confidence that the drum yes. major has because he or she because of the pre-work, because of the work behind the scenes, because of the yes. practices, he or she is confident that guess what? When I blow this, everybody, y'all gonna be on the beat. Yes. So it's yes. some pre-work. Yes. Yes. Listen, yes. It's, some pre, it's some pre-work that a leader has to do. It's some, yes. some pre-work so that when that drum major blow, and, and that's a good analogy for Not this only show. as the leader can I be confident, Guess what? I, I yeah. impart that same level of confidence because I've done my part as the leader, as the coach, as the teacher behind the scenes to prepare them 
right? To be a part of this greater vision. That was that, that's that, and we can't we can't lose that. When we're talking about building capacity, when we're talking about build, building a team, right? Based on this vision, why build alone? You cannot waste time with Negroes that don't follow the beat yeah. of the band. <laughs> yeah. That's right. not going up for practice. That's 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 and my that that interpretation of his notion of cadence, right? With yeah. this no opportunity wasted, and and how often do we find ourselves connected with folks that's just slow, mm -hmm. right? And here's again, and she and and Neon says some powerful. It doesn't it doesn't indict folk, right? I realize I have I function at a high level. I have mm -hmm. been like that, woo, since the beginning, since the beginning, right? So I also have to, and there are times where God calls me to make space and grace for individuals who do not function at the same level. Yeah. So again, God will use, you know, he does ooh, ooh, ooh. A, a mix, right? But at the same yeah. time, identity, because I know who I am, I also recognize, listen, yes. I blow this whistle, look. Yeah. Yes, because right? when and, and I, and I, I've been given this vision and I'm going to be held accountable to yeah. seeing this thing through, so yeah. I have to be intentional around selecting those individuals with cadence, with competency yeah. that have the capacity and the character yeah. to build according to this vision that I, as the leader or the head man, has been given by God. And and I want to say this, I just I, I want to add that you know, while we're talking about capacity, it sounds like we're talking about building a business. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't think that we are specifically, I know we're not specifically talking about building a business, I but I'm building say, across the board. I would say, I would say just self, right? Like okay. I would do that because self is a business. And so okay. how do we take what we've been discussing and make it relative to self? This whole week, I've been laboring like I'm a contractor. I'm a carpenter now, I'm a plumber, I'm a master painter. <laughs> I, I have learned a lot of different skills uh, over the past, you know, three weeks, maybe month. Friend, LaShondra, on the other hand, has been, she has been working hard. Like she's been developing, she's been writing, she's been in the lab, she's been doing all these different things that just, we're in two different lanes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not literally, you know, right now I'm laboring right now. She's using her brain. Mm -hmm. We're talking to the same guy. We listen to the same mm -hmm. guy. We are two different parts of the country. I'm using this. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm using that. I'm using that. You're using head. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fairness, I'm making this, I'm making this, I'm trying to make this plain because I want us to understand that even in friendships, when we start talking about, even as we deal with like capacity of friendships and relationships that we should be in and not, not just significant other relationships, but having the ability to recognize when we in two different places. Yeah. Like LaShondra, because she's using this, she's been, and we are, we are usually partners, like thought partners in a lot of this stuff that is happening in our lives and in our businesses, um, collectively we talk to each other. But I knew that because I'm using these this capacity right now that I would be no good to be in conversation with her. This would frustrate me because I'm not there. And so this week I'm here. And so the only thing I can do for her to help her get to me is send pictures of what I've been doing. And the only thing she can do for me is she's been sending pictures and outlines of these different programs and all these different things that she's been writing. But we understand the cadence, the cadence, the beat. Where we are. It doesn't mean that I, it doesn't mean that I have to cut her off because she isn't available to me because I'm doing this and she doesn't cut me off because I mean, for the long term, we did temporarily cut each other off and say, well, we can't be talking right now because oh, I had to say that friend, I can't match your energy. I don't, I don't want to have a conversation with you and take away from where you are with your energy. And so as we build stop. ourselves individually, the, stop. the oh. maturity though, mm -hmm. that you have to have being lean. And, and when you're building, right? To to say that, right? To realize, okay, my the person that I am in partnership with is in a different space, mm -hmm. right? Not a bad space, right? We're in two different creative realms, right? And so because I know I can't fully support her like she deserves, mm -hmm. right? And I know that she needs because anyone that knows me know I'm high functioning, high level, high energy most of the time unless it's time to crash right mm -hmm. she made the decision 
as my partner to say, because I know I can't match that, her energy let me fall back. And it doesn't, again, like she said, take away from the, our dynamic, our relationship, or even the vein that we're in, but the maturity of a team member to realize, look, mm -hmm. right now, we're in two different spaces. We're in two different creativity realms. We're in two different domains. Um, so let me, again, fall back until I can match. And what, but here's what happened, though, before she go full. Yes, I interrupted her. Here's what happened when she finally called me, y'all, right? And to tell me about my her hands project, guess what it did? It matched. Mm -hmm. Because the energy was not lost. It yeah. don't matter if I play the clarinet and you play the drums. As long as we in the same cadence, yeah. we're going to get down this field and we're going to make beautiful music. Yes. Yes. So, 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 ooh, her realized, her thinking, I, I can't match her energy, duh, 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 because she in head mode and I'm in hands mode. What ended up happening is when God finally allowed us to communicate and she shared all of that energy that she had for using her hands, indeed, actually matched the energy I've yeah. been having with her brain. That's right. That's right. And so it's the same thing with this time that we have on our hands that we have to be mindful of what we're hearing. That, you know, if, if you know there's something inside of you that is you desire to do something, then you gotta start aligning yourself with people that are doing and and um, and and seeing and saying what you're desiring to do, see and say. You know, you can't, it's just like, it's like that game that we used to play when we was kids. I think it was see and say. It had the little string on there when you try, yeah. as a toddler, you're trying to get taught the different animals and yeah. pull the string and it's, you know, it's a cow, you, it's a cow. And then yeah. you gotta, ooh, you know, it's a pig on, on, you know, you, you gotta be able to see and say, we gotta be able to see and say or say and see what we're trying to do. And so guard yourselves, guard yourselves during this time. Be, be mindful, don't, don't, don't allow yourself to be so bogged down with, with um with what's happening around you if it doesn't align with where you're trying to go and where you're trying to see yourself so that's that's just a little quick plug to somebody that may be feeling like y'all talking about capacity building and i'm stuck at home and i don't really know what to do even if you even you know god is yeah. giving you something and you don't know exactly what to do with it at least start you know it's just like uh and i know I, I keep cutting myself off even in my thoughts because so many different thoughts come to my mind but you know i remember i started reading books because i wanted to escape in those characters find something that you can do start following people you know take a minute and step away from the folks you've been following the people that you know you can literally pick up your phone and call and talk to you know the reality is follow somebody that's doing something that maybe you hadn't thought about doing don't just follow them because you know them but follow people um, and I, I'm, when I say follow, I mean from a social media standpoint, because at this point, this is where we are. Sometimes the things that we we say and do and we watch, we shouldn't just be doing it just because it's something that we like. We need to start to broaden our, our, our horizons, broaden our capacity, because we don't know what's next. Yeah. Amen. Somebody say amen. I, oh, amen, Grace. I hear you. Amen. amen. With, so with that, in, in, our, in, our, in our lasting moments, uh want to look just really want to touch on and leave you all with um what neon is saying using this time wisely she'll she'll always speak on the pandemic i won't uh because this should be a principle that you practice period yes I, I, um i haven't had much to say about the pandemic to god be praised for it to God, yeah. Lord, for whatever is being for whatever is coming out of it for anybody that doesn't desensitize or that doesn't diminish any what, right, yeah. tragedies that have occurred as a result yeah. um but regardless of the fact for those of us that still have breath in our bodies that still have life right there's something for us to do and it mm -hmm. is critical that as you think through what does god have need of me for right mm -hmm. we're going back again to identity god the origin of me god when you allow me to be birthed into this world what was the point of that? Yeah. Right? Yes. So death yes. to the day of us just living just because. Death to the days of us just taking life casually, taking relationships casually, taking the destiny moments and divine encounters casually, right? Mm -hmm. I just feel like God is pushing on us and challenging his people to be more strategic with time, more yes. strategic 
with relationships, more intentional around building, around creating, around manifesting. That's just what I believe, right? Um, and so I am, I am not just preaching this. It's something that I'm also trying to intentionally practice, right? So a part of even being my friend in this season, as she's saying, LaShondra's in a different vein. Because I'm like, yo, at any given moment, it may be my last day. Right? right, and the pandemic did expose it. I knew that. Yeah, I already knew that. Right? right now, it has exposed the energies around me, but it also has. You know what, Sean? You know what? We really game over. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I was asleep, I now woke. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, as Neon is saying, when you get to that place, you you then get a, this level of thirst, right? And, and this is more personal, but I hope you're blessing someone. You get to this point where now that you're, you, you, you realize you woke, you're not playing. You have this, this vision from God. And it's almost like Neon is saying, you get this thirst, this urge to now seek out. Now God who? Mm -hmm. I, I got, I'm wrestling with this thing. And I know you've not given me anything to build by myself. Mm -hmm. Right? Because kingdom is not an isolated nothing. Right, yeah. we see partnership as early as Genesis, and we know Genesis is the beginning. Yes, right. <laughs> we see partnerships, right? At the end of the day, uh, uh, it's not good for man to be alone. At the end of the day, we use that always in terms of marriage, but the reality of it is, man was gender neutral in yeah, all things. That's right. Yeah. It's just not good, right? I, just FYI, y'all know I don't really do the, a lot of theological talk, right? A lot of exegetical work, but just just an FYI, it's just not good. I, God gave us from the very beginning partnership, relationship, right? And this intentionality around, I'm going to use these two to produce, to multiply, to replenish, right? And I believe the Bible is still true. I believe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so with that notion of Genesis, the beginning, the origin, right? I take those things and I try to be applied though and look at that. Okay, who do I need to now be partnering with to birth? I, I say this, for those of you that know, I do a women's study in my church called The Delivery Room. Um, and it's um, a, a study of identity, purpose, and destiny with the women of St. John. And the power in the delivery room that God gave me was, guess what? That person that's in that bed ain't never in that room by herself. That's right. I ain't never known no woman give birth. And again, if it's somebody out there that was in the delivery room by herself, please let me know and I'll stand corrected. I've never known a woman to be in a delivery room giving birth by herself. Never. So that notion, right, whether that's the nurse practitioner in there, whether that's the surgeon in there, I've just never known, right? You, it, It's always it's a better one now. Right, right? <laughs> and so the reality of that, when we're looking at that, this notion of giving birth, this is not a solo act. That's right. Right? And so when I've been given something by God, I need to be intentional around now, who am I building with? And so... When we looked at this title, it was so, it's, it's, it's almost a paradox because I'm seeing so many individuals try to build stuff by themselves. And I'm just like, why? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Right? Mm -mm. And, I, and I, I get a frustration because I'm like, you got MJ on your team and you got him on the bench. That's a fool. We just had this whole conversation today. That's a fool. Why? And so why? This, is, but this, is, this is to some leader out there, you need to check your bench. Because I all I love that's E N C H y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds right. Like you know, I'm spelling it out. <laughs> <laughs> what thing I liked about the Bulls? I was an old school Bulls fan. The bitch was even cold. The bench yeah. was trunk tight, right? So yeah. I didn't just develop the starting five. I also took time to invest. We talked about that earlier, to invest yeah. and to build and to cultivate my bench. Because yeah. see, I don't know yeah. when these five gonna get tired. That's I, right. Injury may happen, Lord forbid. Yeah. And I gotta be able to tell Woo. my bench. Wait, wait, but no. I'm in the pre-work as a coach, as a leader, as a pastor, no. as a teacher, as a parent. My bench just as cold as my starting no. five. Some you all need to call it some of y'all need to call a time out and then sub in because your MVP, the person that has the gifting and the capacity and the capability to win the championship could very well be on your bench. And I got scripture. Let me back yeah. it up and then I'm going to give it to my girl. The Bible teaches us with the prophet yeah. Elisha and the yeah. one with the oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? 
She already had everything she needed. Everything she needed in the house. When God yeah. gives you a vision, you gotta invest. <laughs> listen, I just we just I, listen, listen. Why build alone? What God has already given us, He's equipped us, He's given us everything that we need. You yeah. just gotta look in your house. Neon yeah. says something, then we can we you can have it. What God <laughs> is giving me, even in this season, I ain't bought nothing. Yeah, I ain't bought nothing, can't go nowhere, ain't went nowhere. God's like, son, look at what you already got. You got a laptop, you, already have. you, you got you got an iPad, you That's got a phone, right. you got fingers, go to work. Yeah, 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 media. yeah. Use what you already have in your yeah. house. And I believe, as the Bible shows, LaShondra, that when you go and use what you got, I will make sure that the oil never run out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because see, what you got to understand, and we just talked about this uh, Sunday or Monday. I want to say it was Sunday. And again, this is from studying, you know, I, I listened to Dr. Miles Monroe this past Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And he used, he used the same text around Elijah and the woman with oil. And what, what he, the lens that he was coming from is that you 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 got to have a seed. And so, you know, you, 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 you got to have, you, you got to have a seed. And so right. some folks think that the seed is probably the oil in the meal that she had to make the bread, but that wasn't it. It was yeah. the man she chose to invest in. Yeah. That was, he was the seed. Yeah. Because now, <laughs> when she invested in him, now they're, 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 it's being multiplied. Everything that he promised that was going to come to her, that her in her house would never let, it never and happen. So again, the partnership, the duality. It, 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 it requires, it, it requires, requires it. To be able to be all together, you it's cannot. So, it is so critical. Go ahead, friend. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just. I was. I mean, you know, you gave. I, you gave the analogy of substitutions when it comes to sports, and since you put my officiating career out there, which I typically don't talk about, one of my greatest joys when I am officiating a game is that when substitutions come in the game, when the when the pace doesn't change, the athleticism doesn't change. The, the skill set doesn't change. I can tell that that team has been well coached and that's, that coach recognizes that he or she has an entire bench. They have invested in, they have developed and nothing changes. But nothing. when we don't make that investment, we can expect things to change. And sometimes not making that investment starts with our own self. Yes. Because I felt yes. like I needed to build alone. And then when I realized that I hit yes. a brick wall yes. and I didn't do that, now what do i do and now i'm struggling with even because i haven't even taught myself how to be able to ask someone else to assist me i don't even know what to do so what i really look like to the world is a whole mess because other people that have that lens can see you don't know what you're doing you, you know, know why it's so many of us that's in the church that can look at things and say oh man we could be doing that better we could be doing this we can be doing that because those people possess those skills and sometimes and i'm not and i ain't talking about no one church in particular i'm just talking about the body of christ and i'm talking about on a job or whatever it is you got people old folk when i did get the iphone i had to call my girl tam because she has, she had at the time where well, they're young adults now, but at the time she had two teenage daughters who had been up on iPhones forever. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. My house, come on. My house on. Come on. My, what was comfortable for me and go to her house to sit down so her daughters could mm -hmm. show me how to use my iPhone. Yeah. Because I wanted to do something, but what about the times when I didn't do it? So what my inability, my inabilities created a desire. My inabilities yeah. created a thirst to go seek out what yeah. I currently did not have. Capacity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And you spoke earlier about about um, about God. He, you, you kind of you tapped around, or you you spoke just briefly about God availing people with that skill set to help you, especially when God is assign has assigned you to do something. Absolutely. He will send the people to you. I'm telling y'all, when I got the assignment from God, working through a, no a national nonprofit that my time in Alabama was up and I was going on assignment to work in Nashville. I did not know anybody in Nashville. My assignment was to organize faith-based leaders mm -hmm. around the state of education to help our faith-based black leaders understand what was happening in our K-12 educational system. I didn't know anybody in Nashville, 
But because I knew it goes back to knowing this assignment yeah. I've been yeah. given it really come from God because I knew that it came from God. Y'all, when I got to Nashville, of course, I prayed my church, my local church here in Birmingham. They prayed over me. They prayed with me, anointed my head with oil and sent me on my way. And my prayer was that I would find someone or that God would reveal to me someone that was much like my pastor here, Pastor Craig, who who is a fanatic about education. And has mm -hmm. always been, and he also had faith credibility. He had the faith-based community credibility, and he had street credibility. And I pray that God would send, that he would reveal whoever that man or woman was to me in Nashville. And when yeah. I tell y'all, when I got to Nashville, that individual was revealed to me. Mm, when I got there. When I got there, it was revealed to me. He was revealed to me. And every door that i attempted to go in from there it opened with no problems at all i had people yeah. telling me how can you do this you're not from here how do you know these people and, yeah. and to sum it up you have folks that have been in that city doing that kind of work for years and me and my little self yeah and see i used to tell them y'all don't know who sent me mm. you think i came on my own you think i came in the name of this nonprofit that i'm working for bayo but that's not who sent me mm -hmm. Sent me, and he had made every way clear. It's important working again this project on my grandparents' house. When I tell you that the neighborhood has been stopping by, what you mean? Mm -hmm. Now you know it's some that's just being nosy. What you doing? Right, 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 right. I'm Sharon, because I need people to know that it ain't nobody but God. This is a label yeah. of love. Let me yeah. do this. But when I tell you that people have been coming by with skill sets, tools, had a neighbor to give me a whole sink. And it ain't given to see so they can go and say, oh, I did this and I did right. that. It's people really showing up. God will assign to you right. people. Like, they, you're right, right. Doctor, what you, you need and who you need when you need it. When you so need it. And you are done, you got to be willing to go. I, you well, to and the adverse of that, you have to be willing to receive. That's right. That's you, right. Have to, you have to have, to have a posture of humility. To realize I cannot do this alone. I don't want to do it alone. Oh, no. That's where pride is. Well, it's time out, y'all, for us to be in closed minded. Yes. It's time out for us to be willing to learn. Yes. It's yes. time out for us. Like, we cannot afford. I tell people all the time, especially when I was in the Army, if something happened to me, listen, I'm not, as far as racism, I, I can't wake up. If I'm, if I'm about to die, wake up out about to die and say, wait a minute, is that white blood or black blood? Live. No, I need some blood. Matter of fact, I know my blood type is B positive. That's what I need. I don't need, I don't need, I don't need to be concerned about where did it come from? What is we have got to be willing to open ourselves up to be broader than the things. And this is a this is a whole nother topic that's a struggle for us as African Americans. Because we have rightfully, rightfully so had some things done, not rightfully so, but we have had some things done to us that causes us to be frustrated and um and operate out of fear. But if you got the spirit of Christ living inside of you, he, yeah. he didn't give us a spirit of fear. Yeah, we, we don't have to operate in that. We can operate. What my t shirt say? I'm trying. I can't get this camera right for nothing. God for dance. Yeah. That's what we have to operate yeah. with. Yeah, knowing that God that began whatever He began in me in the beginning, He, he gonna finish it. Don't think we should from birth. He yeah. already knew. That's what my purpose is. That's what my purpose is, to be able to identify what it is that God has purposed me here for. We got to understand he gave all of us a, 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 a fingerprint, a thumbprint, a toe print. It's, mine's won't match yours. It's not another one like it in the world. And whatever God assigned, whatever he has assigned for us to do on our lives, it belongs to me. What God got for me to do, friend, you can't do it. Can't, and won't. You might come close, and why you can't do what he assigned for me to do, and I can't do what he assigned for you to do. And but never through capacity, through capacity. And then the other thing about building alone, you work in isolation. Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah, because you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you work alone, then how are you going to accomplish what you need to accomplish? Yes, because we don't know all things. We don't know all things. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, friend. Why build? Listen, that's it. I, I, I think you know because of course we could. You know, we. I, I want. I wanted tonight to be around two things. A being given definition around building capacity, um, and then leaving with this charge of again, 
do know uh, that God, if God is giving you something to build, he's also giving you uh, what you need, who you need uh, to indeed, again, fulfill that thing, right? And you, and I think, again, on one end, you have to uh, humble yourself um, and not operate in a spirit of pride and ego and realize you do need, right? Mm -hmm. um, and on, the, on and then those of us that are sent to help, we, again, we have to have that willingness to indeed be able to offer our skills. There's so many, we, we touched on a little bit, but I want to go back as, as we wrap up, so many relationships, marriages, ministries, businesses, organizations fall flat. For one, I, I one or two things, right? Either somebody on this end was not willing to receive the help or somebody said idle and could give help and didn't. Mm -hmm. And I believe there are enough of us out here um, that have what that are tuned in um and guess what know enough with god and in god that can indeed collaborate and connect with others uh with an intended goal of building capacity for kingdom mm -hmm. and that is that i want to leave with that charge on tonight uh for those of you that may be struggling with okay well i got i got an idea i got a dream i got a goal i got a vision now what's next do know god will send the who the what and all of that um and be open to receiving that and that's and that's a whole nother dynamic yeah. and, and not missing god like straight and that may be uh next week i'm i'm archiving that now i'm not missing god when it doesn't show up how mm -hmm. you thought when you mm -hmm. thought you mm -hmm. think it's gonna show up right yeah. because it ain't even, again it's not even about you you again have to be the facilitator of blessings that come your way you have to be a steward over who comes your way right mm -hmm. you don't want to mismanage what could very well be a, a competent team member yeah. because again you want where you needed to be in a posture of humility realizing yeah. no i need him i need her yeah. bump yeah. because of this vision not because yeah. i like him and her not because i yeah. even prefer him or her mm -hmm. but because of this vision i need what him or her got mm -hmm. come here yeah let's develop yeah, if, you let's don't, if we don't receive if we don't receive what someone has to offer, we don't know how we're messing up or interrupting or delaying the assignment on somebody else's life. And, you know, I, I, I just, you know, that's just the thought that, you know, something I personally had to learn. Um, and that's, you know, true testimony because I am naturally like a giver. I'm always giving, always giving. And a lot of people, if you, some of those folks out there like that, that's a giver. A lot of times we don't like to receive. We would rather be the giver. We would rather not be the one that's on the recipient end. And so, um, you know, either either it was deposited into my spirit or someone actually had to say to me that I, I am blocking someone else's blessing when I'm not willing to receive because yeah. you don't know how God is tapping that person. Because you could be the ground it. that they need to put their seed in. That they need to put it in. Yeah. yeah. At, or is, is God, you know, saying, are you willing? Are they willing to put it in? Because a right. lot of we right. have a few stuff that don't make sense at all right it doesn't make right. sense at all but you know we we don't need to be in a position to block that but you know i i just know that there is so much that we can learn and we should not be picking and choosing who we can learn um we can learn that from we have to just be willing to do what you know whatever and again it goes it, it goes back to identity and it goes back to a relationship with christ because you know you, you're not talking about this time of us being at home yeah this what got us at home and i'm not speaking about it you know often but i am saying that there are some things for certain that god is being very intentional about with this time that we are spending at home and so we got to be i think i <clears throat> excuse me may have lost my thought on what i was just about to say on that but i know that we you know we have to be intentional about the time that we are uh, that we are spending how we're spending it yeah who we're spending with and who we're hearing from because um man it's great work it's just i don't know it's just it's just greater works for us building out here. capacity building capacity i want to leave on this note thank you all again for tuning in you all thank you for being all across everywhere so again thank you all again want to leave before i kind of go to my closing remarks uh with even building have have your plan right Sometimes it's, it's hard to follow if, if I don't know what I'm following. And if you don't have a plan, mm -hmm. I definitely don't have your plan. Yeah. Right. And so sometimes we skip past sitting through the prop, writing down the process, writing down 
of our SMART goals, how Neon started this, writing down what is my end goal, what it is I'm trying to accomplish, and then, and then articulating that to others so that they can know this is what I have to offer to this. This is what I can help with, right? Neon talked about the house and her grandma said somebody coming with a sink. So clearly it was clear to Neon she needed a sink, right? And she could put out there, hey, this, this, if somebody came and say, hey, what is that you need? We have to be able, those that have the vision, have to be able to speak to what it is what that need. I need yeah. and or be open to say, I, I really don't even know. But here's mm -hmm. my overarching and maybe you, as we come into further relationship, can give me insight because you maybe can open me up to something that I didn't even know I need based on what you saw I was trying to build. Mm -hmm. Building capacity. <laughs> Why? Alone. It's just a lot of wasted time. It's a lot of foolish, foolishness in building alone. It feels good. Um, you know, it, 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 sometimes it feels like, you know, I'm good. I may be in my zone. Um, I may be okay. But the reality is, is that you're, you're going to be much more successful with having um, a team, a group of people or a, another person with you um it's just like man and friend you know this is this is kind of it's about to turn the curve because you and i are both single women and we talk often about our husbands about our future husbands and so like at this point we, we you and i have both talked consistently about like what we're what god has blessed us to do as single women and individually but my god whenever whenever we you know whenever our husbands find us like the world is gonna have to get ready because if sean can be dope all alone and doing all these wonderful things she's doing yeah. and she says the same thing about me but we know the level the energy level that we drive at the things that we do like it's gonna take the right cadence <laughs> the individual with the right cadence only to know what to do, the right character, the right competence, and even the right capacity. And if they don't have that capacity, and sometimes that's one of the most powerful things about having your identity and knowing who you are, because it's, it's just impossible to go for anything that's less than right. that. Yes. Um, it's not you know what you're trying to build. You know exactly what you're trying to be. Vision. <laughs> Vision. And the, with that, I'll add just some encouragement to those of you who like myself? We all, I always know what I bring to the table. The bottom line is, this this is applicable. I'm not even gonna let my friend go there tonight. Um, I want to keep this very generic around mm -hmm. ministry, business, church, organizations, friendships, relationships across the board. Again, know what you bring to the table. Even if you're not the one with the vision, you're just a team member or a, a, um, a supporting actor or actress to a greater role, to a greater scene be confident in that thing, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone will not carry the baton. Everyone will not be the drum major. You may just be the one that when the drum major blows that whistle, you indeed be on beat. And so I definitely want to encourage you all on tonight. Uh, even for myself, there may be, again, if you know you have a skill set or you know that, okay, Sean, I'm missing my team, okay? I'm not the general contractor, but I may be uh, someone that can assist this greater project, avail yourself. Uh, I guarantee you there's a purpose. There's a reason God is connecting, not just in this season, but any season. God is wanting to do a greater work in and through his people. And so we all have to be in position and be in a posture to be ready to both receive and to also give, right? And so I want us to think about, I hope you all just, I hope something was shared tonight as we process these nuggets of not just building capacity, giving definition, but also knowing we were not called to build alone. Get in sync, get in step, get in connectivity, find your tribe, as they used to say. Find your tribe, yeah. find your team, yeah. find you the place where your purpose will flourish. And be definitely on the lookout for leaders, for teachers, for coaches. If they don't want to make an investment, mm, you might want to think, think critically around putting your gifts in a space or putting yourself in a space that can't give back to you. I do encourage you all. Um, my girl does this every Thursday where her destiny downloads. She is a phenomenal woman of God. The anointing that is on her life, the oil that's on her life is, it is evident. It just drips, it flows. And so I'm just grateful to be a friend. I'm a grateful to be someone that um, can, uh, can discuss who God is, uh, on some very, very deep levels, we push and press each other. And so I'm just grateful for a friendship like hers. And um, 
I really encourage you to follow her on all of her social media outlets. And she is just such a brilliant woman. I mean, I, I'm just, I am always in awe of the creativity that she has and what God is doing in her life. Like, you know, this is, you know, a couple of years from now, if that long, she'll be looking back at these uh, Destiny downloads like, wow, like God has really moved in her life. Like she is going to be a international phenomenon. And so, hey man, hey, hey listen. Now, I encourage you to, you know, um, invest in her now. If you got a small business, if you are a teacher, you are an educator, you have a curriculum, if you are looking for anything, she is, um, she is, she definitely possesses that. She does graphics. I mean, I, I, I wish I was making this stuff up, but I'm not. Like, I am not making it up. It's literally Come on now. blown away by all the things that she is able to do. She is truly gifted. And when the word of God tells us that your gift will make room for you, yeah. I am a living testimony, but I know for a fact yeah. that she definitely is. And so because of that, I'm grateful. Thank you for this opportunity. I pray that God blesses what we have shared, um, what we have um, the words that we've sung, the words of encouragement, not only that he blesses those that are listening in, but that he blessed each of us for even elevating our voices to be able to do something like this tonight. So thank you for the opportunity. I love you. And, um, you know, may, may God multiply the seed that is fallen into your life. Yes.